All right, so um, let's see. Today is Wednesday, May the 2nd, 2012. So I'm talking about taking over orphan meetup groups. Everybody knows how to use meetup, right? No. So, um, well, if you don't know how to use meetup, you know, ask somebody or just start an account. It's easy. So basically what this is is uh, when people start a meetup group, um, they're the organizer and if for some reason they change their email address is usually what happens and their credit card ex expires and then meetup starts you know asking them for their credit card asking them and then there's no credit card and so meetup starts the dissolution process to dissolve the group and the first step in that process is to throw the group out into the the great ocean of all other meetup folks and uh, you can take it over now you only know about those groups though if you're on the group. So what that means is if you're operating in a particular niche or silo of information like um, business, entrepreneur, SEO, or internet marketing, or Calvin you work in fitness, or holistic medicine, or whatever, um, you go and join all those meetup groups. And so as they dissolve, as the organizers disappear, you'll get a note like this right here that says your meetup group will shut down in two weeks and there's a big button here that says keep this group going if you click on that button it basically lets you take over the group so that's the the first step is to join the groups that you'd like to monitor in the in your category your niche um, and then uh, like I have my email I have a really complicated email sorting system but in meetup I've got all these different sorts, so the people that send me direct messages, meetup support, and messages like important message about your group go in one spot. And that's one of the first places I check every morning. So what happens is that these things are kind of like, um, they're, you can think of them in terms of real estate. There's, you know, in real estate, um, uh, most investors think in terms of you either got a distressed property or a distressed owner. And what you're really looking for is a distressed owner, which is somebody that disappears and they've got a great property and now it's just there for free. Yeah. Right? It's different than real estate. There's no qualifying for loans, no getting money. You just go and take over the group. So let's go take a look at this group here. Uh, I haven't even looked at it, but we will now. So. This group's got, look at that, 272 members. I just got 272 new clients for taking that meetup meet up group over that are interested in, uh, let's see, Austin e-business and online marketing for business owners. You getting the idea here? So that's, you know, 272 people that uh, have gone to a lot of meetups. And one of the reasons I took over this meetup group was I noticed some people on there that I knew and you can go through like here are recent meetups this one was done on February the 23rd and we're in May so it's been fairly recent that people have been getting together in this group who was running that uh, you know that's a good question um, I'd have to go back in time in archive.org to see Trish, it says I changed the location yeah to well maybe or it might be that she's a, um, a co-organizer or event organizer but you can look through here, like I, I um, that's not that big a deal, I'm just curious. Yeah, th these people, I, you know, they're new to me, and I saw some other people like, um, uh, like Vogel Poles on this group. So, you know, th yeah, it's probably an interesting group. Now, the, would you contact yeah. them individually or send out a mass email? Or well, so the, yeah, the, the next question is what you do with it, and it's like real estate, you're either gonna hold it or flip it. This is, fun. this is funny. I just thought about this this morning. It's all real estate, hold or flip. Yeah. And so if you hold it, then what you what the, the goal is that, for example, if you didn't have a meetup group, you might use this to seed your group. Mm -hmm. Like that's what you did, David. Didn't When we worked together, didn't you take over some random mm -hmm. group that had a few hundred members on it? Yeah. So when you take over a group, you do lose the... the um, the facility of sending a message like when you form a new group mm -hmm. and you set your see all these categories over here we're about yeah. so these well kind of yeah these categories right here so like online marketing social media what you do when you form a group is you set these categories and then when you send out a um, uh, well when you when the group actually forms which means it makes it through meetups review of the group to make sure you're actually legit mm -hmm. 
um, then the group forms, and then all the people that are on all the categories waiting lists get an email. Now this gets really interesting too because look at this. Uh, if I do a, um, uh, let's see, uh, everybody know the alternative syntax for Google, so if you say site.meetup, that means that you're only going to search meetup, right? And if, uh, if I say in title, um, uh, type, if I could spell here, uh, waiting list Austin. So that shows me that in general it looks like there's two and a half million uh, waiting lists. You know, I think that's probably something's a little bit broken there, but that gives you an idea that of how you can find the waiting lists. Well, it's probably looking up past ones as well. Maybe. Anyway, the, the point is that this is a way to find the waiting lists in uh, Meetup. And so if you, for example, go to, um, like, uh, we probably wouldn't be interested in, like, lesbianfriends.meetup.com. Um, but why couldn't you do, why couldn't you create a bot that puts, that's, that, first of all, enter, you know, the, the bot automates the syntax, then the bot would then take a keyword and mm -hmm. then search, then refine the search. Then the bot could then go into each individual thing and click whichever buttons need to be clicked. Yeah. So so here's the thing: when you say when you say bot, are you talking about starting at Google like this? Well, no. Just take like you bought studios or having a programmer create a scraper essentially that automates the whole process. Yeah. So here's the here's the idea that I had for a scraper. First off, they changed the um, meetup to circumvent bots change their login and how the navigation works to be JavaScript based. So what that means is for you to actually write a bot you've got to use a Java engine which is either Rhino or V8. I don't know if you know about those. Those are really cool. They're, what they are is uh, V8 is the Google version which is what I would use and V8 basically is a browser with JavaScript that you can write scripts in. It's like a command line language like Perl or PHP. So you can freaking write scripts to go and navigate and do things like, uh, you know, log in and then traverse to different places. And because it's running JavaScript, you actually, if, if like a pop-up comes on the screen, you've got access to the fields in the pop-up. So you're saying you can do it, you just do it via JavaScript instead of bot. Yeah, it's, so it's, it's way more. more complicated than just hacking out. Like there's a module in Perl called www uh, colon colon mechanize, which is what people used to use a lot. But that only works if it's straight HTML. Like if you've got an HTML form that does a login, then you can use the normal HTML-based versions. And most people have switched over to using JavaScript or Facebook Connect or something like that to, to um, access Facebook and also to uh, defeat bots. So um, anyway, let's get back to the waiting list here. So here's one for... And what is a waiting list? Well, I'm about to show you. Entrepreneur. So in Meetup, um, when you go into your Meetup account, you can camp on topics like entrepreneur, business networking, wellness. Um, so here, for example, is the entrepreneur waiting list. Now, how much would you have to pay, Baxter, to get access to 2,134 entrepreneurs in Austin that were waiting to hear from you? I mean, they're sitting waiting to hear what you got to sell them. Oh, and it even gets better, because let's say that you're Sean Collins and you're running an affiliate summit in New York. Look at this. Wait for it. Oh, yeah. 17,535. So here, if I was Collins, in fact, I'm sending a copy of this video, and I was running an affiliate summit in New York and, El and uh, Vegas. I would start a meetup group about uh, two months ahead of each one of them and actually list the event at Affiliate Summit in Manhattan and in Vegas. So we got access to all these people. So now let's, let's do a quick uh, little arithmetic here. So there's seven. But I, I still don't get what, what's. What's the perp Why are they on a waiting list? What they put themselves on a waiting list, so they get notified anytime you form a group that has a category of entrepreneur. They these people get an email, oh. so it ain't spamming. Yeah, they've said they yo be, yo. Yeah, so so anytime you, you put a meet, they're going to automatically be. 
anytime you form a meetup group for the first time, not create an event. So that's so if you take over a meetup group, you lose this first pass. Now I'm going to tell you how to get around that in a minute, but you 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 lose the you only get the first pass when a meetup group forms. So um, anytime you're running a live event, any place, like if you're doing like a joint venture with somebody where you're speaking, I always form a new meetup group. Like if I'm going to Dallas to speak, guess what? I form a meetup group that's in Dallas and you know accesses all the lists in Dallas about whatever topic I'm talking about because nice. I take it upon myself to fill my room I don't trust anybody to fill a room for me pretty cool yeah pardon me you make your speaking event at the Dallas, meetup the yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so and the what you don't have go to ahead. go out there and conduct meetup groups ahead of time to no if I'm going to physically speak in Dallas that's the I set up a meetup group that routes people to whatever venue that is. So, the, and the, the meetup police don't uh, uh, stop you for that? As long as you've got a physical venue. If you start a meetup group that only has virtual venues, they won't let the meetup group form. In fact, they'll disband it and say, you know, if you do it too many times, they'll give you your money back and ban you from being an organizer. But now Sean Collins would be charging for Affiliate Summit, so how does that work? He'd just have a meetup group that would route people to the registration page. Oh, okay. That would also doesn't that defeat the point of meetup? Because isn't I mean? Oh, well, I'm a neophyte to meetup, so so there's two, there's yeah. I understand, I think I know where you're going. Is like, what do you? I mean, what's the the yeah, real I mean, purpose? If, if you're, I mean, because the point of meetup is to actually create a meetup. But if you start just funneling people to a sales process, won't meetup kind of frown upon that? No, because you actually do, in fact, what I would do uh, is I would do a, uh, on Meetup, I'd do like a pre-event, and then okay. here's where to register the main event, and then do a post-event. And then also, what I would do is, in the event listing and the Meetup group description, I'd say, this is for a set of physical events in New York, or Vegas, or Austin, or wherever he's doing it, and uh, this Meetup group will run for as long as the event series runs, and then next year, when... We have the next meetups, we'll list them here too. In the meantime, if you'd like to keep up with all the content residue we publish from all the affiliate summits all over the world, you join our main meetup group. So what you do is you, I call these satellite groups or sibling groups, so you or router groups, so you create all these router groups that run for a finite period, and then you either strobe them to rerun them sometime in the future, or you just disband them. And so you can use those to route people. That's what I do. I always route people back to my main group. So Y'all have arguably one of the most successful meetup systems out there in your business. I mean, you drive most of your business through it. Are you able to monetize? Have you been able to monetize through the meetup group directly yourself? Well, when you say monetize direct, you mean well, have I mean, Meetup right. collect money for you? Yeah, I mean, following the strategies that, that, that you're talking about. Well, the problem is the money process that Meetup does, I would strongly recommend you never involve Meetup as a Meetup.com's money-taking system with your money-taking system because it is just screwy as all get up, and you will drive your customers off. What Gonzalez does is he you know, says, you know, Here's the meetup that's going to happen at Sixth Street, and here's where to buy a ticket. And where do you? How do people buy tickets? One shopping cart. One shopping cart. Or square at the door. Mm. That square is awesome. Okay. Yeah. So yes, and I think you were wanting to know if, if they if it's integrated. It's on meetup. Yeah. Like but, you would on Eventbrite. Mm -hmm. No, because it sucks. To him and they uh, they start monitoring you, monitoring you more closely. They become like Google. Then they're like, oh. Somebody How can we get it in your pocket? Somebody who's using us to make money. The other problem is that what they do too, what they do too is the biggest complaint I've seen is that once you start charging for meetups, uh, meetups, um, like if, say I've got a meetup that is, you're supposed to buy a ticket through meetup. Um, I don't know if I can, let's see if I can get to, uh, I don't even know if they've got the, I guess we have to look at their monetizing thing here. Let's see, optional roles, uh, sponsored membership dues. Okay, so here's the problem. When you when you go in and set all this up, what it does is it starts barraging everybody on your meetup list for your payment. And it also, if they don't make a payment, then it starts 
running a tab with them and saying you owe this much this month you <laughs> and it just it just bludgeons these people and they get torqued off and they leave so I strongly recommend that you never ever ever set up anything to do with their membership due system okay you yeah that yeah. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, I, I, saved me on that when I had it when I first started. Oh, I know he started. I was like, dude, you don't want to do that. I was like, well, like I don't want to set up a shopping cart and all that. Like, Trust me, and yeah, I was like, backpedal, 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 backpedal. So anyway, let's go back to this category thing just for a minute. Before so before you go to the category, yeah, mm -hmm. I still don't understand what a waiting list. Is. I mean, I understand what the generic word. Oh, uh, wh a waiting list. Like if I go into my account here, uh, let's see if it's. General. Like you, you list the, all the things that you want to know more about. Uh, like, like in your meetup group, you're, you're like, you're, you're saying, "Hey, I'm interested in health." Right. And I'm interested in um, stand up paddle. Stand up paddle. I'm. In, Who's saying? So you are when you when you when you <laughs> when you, you join meetup meet and your no. own thing. You want to know the meetup okay. groups and what future meetup right. groups are being cool. created. Done. The the problem is that meetups front end is so freakishly stupid and if you if it me if any that meetup com listens to this you guys are just stupid as stumps stupid as a bag so, of hammers so basically i thought it was waiting list meant yeah. i thought a waiting list meant that like somebody said there's only room for 10 people at this meetup and then there's like, no no there's two wait like yeah you're so getting to see that more people yeah there, it's there's confusion now because you're talking about an event waiting list i ain't talking so about that what, i'm talking about a category or a topic waiting list gotcha. People that are not already a member of a meetup group somewhere. No, they're no, you can be a member. They're just saying they want to wait. They're waiting to be in, in, uh, informed of other when a meetup like that. Yeah, meetup is so stupid that I can't even figure out how to get to. Or, or just things that you're interested in. Yeah, basically, it's like, hey, I'm interested in this. Like I so, signed, like, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, like I signed up for holistic and organic and things like that. What you're talking about? Yeah, but let's uh, see, Meetup's system is so brain dead now that I can't even figure out how to get to my list of... So you would think that you'd go under general top and it would say, you know, here are all the things you're... all the topics you're camped on. Mm -hmm. I can't even figure out how you're to get like to that now. One of the most knowledgeable Meetup people <laughs> I know. Is. I know, and I got news. If I can't figure out how to get to it... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Level playing ground. Okay, uh, uh, let, let's let's try something here. So let's see if I can figure out how to do this. Um, well, let's you click the one at the very bottom that says "Delete your Meetup account." <laughs> <laughs> so if I do a search for Bulldog here, excuse me, <laughs> this is ridiculous. So I think so. If I hit join. And let's see if I can join this without answering the, all these stupid questions. Okay, now now it says, see, now it clicks up, click the topic below and add your interests. But the, the problem is, how the heck do I get to my interests? See, there's no way to, I mean, it says to add these to your interests, but I don't know how many, how to get to... Hmm. When you originally yeah. sign up, there's a thing like list your zip code and what are you interested in. There's like two bars across the top, and that's how you. Can yeah, but I'm trying to get back to it. So anyway, I did. did I, Click find a meetup group. Click find a meetup group. Yeah. David. That's how I did. This it. is an opportunity to create a better meetup group. Boom. <laughs> I mean, create a better clone. Something yeah, that's, that actually works. Okay, so that's sort of how I started. And then it's like, well, if you want to. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's tech startup. A really cool, a really cool you got it, baby. community. All right, well, anyway, the, so Meetup is so stupid that you can't uh, figure out, or I can't figure out how to get to it I I anymore. It used to be under your account, and it just listed all the ones you were interested in. Um, so, anyway, let's get back to our conversation here. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, waiting list for entrepreneurs in New York. Let's take New York. So now you can have up to I think 15 categories. So imagine if you are smart enough to know which are the 15 top categories in New York, which I do. And so my guess is that anytime I start a meetup in New York, I can get to about 150,000 people for exactly zero, well, $72 every six months. 
Yeah, you understand where this is going. I mean, if if you're doing lead generation and you're like doing SEO and actually paying for traffic, oh my God, why? Because then you have to get all the you have to get all the traffic. You have to gauntlet them, figure out who's good. Meetups already done that. Tell you what, I will do. The, I'll I'll commit to running this as a test. Test. Tomorrow. I'll oh. do it. Oh, cool. Tomorrow, see what happens. Good deal. So now now back to our uh, orphan meetup groups. <laughs> so let's go back. Let's go back to our. Uh, let's go back to our uh, uh, group here. So if, you, if I take this group and I use it as the kernel of a new group, then I'd use that as a base group and then create other meetup groups to route people to this one. And every time I create a new meetup group, then I get the email. So that's how I get around missing that first email, if that makes sense. So if I, if I take this meetup group over, I miss the option or the ability to get that first email sent out to all the categories because it's already formed. Um, so if I'd like to have access to that, then I just form new meetup groups, which is exactly what I do. So, for example, so then they get a message that you started a new one, right? Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. So you don't take it over again. the same thing, or how do you name it? Whatever you'd like. So you don't take it over. You just notify all the members of that group. Well, I've taken it over right now. It also that allows me to email all these people. Yeah. Now I'm going to tell you. Else. Now I'm going to tell you the powerful stuff yeah, to do with this group. SEO right there. So you can, if you're gonna, if you're gonna uh, keep this, then you normally you run it as a normal group meetup group. If you're gonna flip it, then what you'd like to do is optimize it for SEO juice, yes. link juice to your site. And here's how you do that. See this discussion thing right here, and you click on this uh, message board here. Look at all those articles. Guess what you can do when you are a meetup organizer? You can go click one of these puppies, and you can say. Uh, edit. Yeah, Guess what you can put in there? Buy chocolate bliss. A link to your website. Now, there was a rumor that came out a couple months ago that the Meetup Link Juice was no no longer existent. Well, I, yeah, I actually did some. Yeah, you were think you were the one that told me that. Yeah, uh, when the it wasn't the it was in between Panda and Penguin. There was a update that Google did to their um, infrastructure that I, they didn't even name it. Um, it was a random update that they announced on their webmaster blog and if you're doing anything with SEO at all you freaking should camp on the webmaster blog like I've got software that runs every morning that tells me when certain web pages change and once a week I go and look and it, and the software scrapes all the articles off of webmaster um, Google and sends me you know all the articles and one of the articles was this little random thing that says um, we've changed the way that we analyze sites to where all subdomains are treated as primary domain content now. I mean that was like I read that and I'm like well there goes about 80 percent of the freaking web down the tubes because for example in meetup like if you had rawfood.meetup.com that was treated as a separate domain so all the juice around um, raw food collected in that category and would push to all the sites that were linked to it. Now you got things like uh, French Bulldogs and Raw Food and Carberry Repair and uh, Three-Legged Blind pot billied Pigs Pole Dancing. <coughs> all that content is all merged together and it, it's the, the link juice is meaningless because none of the content's related anymore. At least that's my thinking. And I noticed that the PR on my uh, web, uh, the my meetup sites, uh, like there's not a PR checker that's easy to run in uh, Chrome, but there's one in Firefox that just puts the PR up. And most of the pages that I used to have uh, sevens and eights on went to that, like you know twos to fours. And it was it was like in a week's time, I, and I watched it and it went down, 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 down. So much less. But any juice is good juice if it's from a page that is related to your topic. So, for example, if I was doing networking for success, whatever, this doesn't really have much content that's useful. Let's see if we can find one that's a little bit more useful. It's a better. Um, uh, question about edu and gov backlinks. Now, here's a good one. So, this thing has been going on for a year, right? So, this 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 page has been existing for a year. So, if I go in here and I say um, like say I'm Brian Horn and I got a 
Go, you know, the Gov, Edu, uh, what's that hi, link hijack product or something? Right. Then I would go in here and I would uh, say uh, either uh, modify the, you know, one of these replies or add another reply to it that linked to the link hijack product. So that would push the juice from this discussion to there. And then I would click over here and say close to new replies because I wouldn't want somebody else putting their product. Another trick you can do is you can go back to, um, well, this thing right here, start a new discussion. Guess what you can do there? You could say something like, uh, we'll just do it here, resource guide. Um, uh, Austin Internet Marketing Party. Um, and then uh, you use Internet Marketing Party, right? For the... Oh. No, I'm pushing juice directly to his site because Meetup's got plenty of juice. They don't need any more. They got juice coming out of their orifice. Oh, they got so juicy orifice side. Or uh, I, or, or, I don't know if that's right. TMI. TMI, TMI. It's true. I've, I've seen it. With my own two eyes. Was up late last night. Oh man. <laughs> you went to the website. Yeah, I checked it out. I so, link. For only twenty nine ninety five a month. Okay, so I just <laughs> so I just put a, uh, a a a link in here and actually I'm gonna change this because Meetup does funky stuff to their links. Internet marketing party. All right, so uh, Internet Marketing Party is a great place to network and learn about marketing SEO. Check, uh, check it hey, out. Brian Keith Thatcher, David Favor, Steve Sigwell, Calvin Harvey. So now, I'll get, so, so now, guess what? If I go look at these discussions here, look at that. And I'm, uh, I, what the heck? I'm going to pin that at the top. So that's pinned. So it's always pinned at the top now. And I'm going to go in here and say close to new replies so nobody can go in there and, and change it. How would they ch like change it as an edit it? Or add something else to it like they say, oh, that David Gonzalez, he's, he's awesome. an evil guy. <laughs> well, if they say you're awesome, that's great. But if they say you're evil, you don't want them talking about it. So, so anyway, so basically if you look now, you'll see the little red uh, thing with the hash through it that says it can't be updated. And you see the pin is active to say it's pinned to the top. Why would everybody pin this to the top? Yeah, I, can I you remove the replies? Close to new replies. I'd like to. I, I welcome. Oh, you like to? Okay, so Gonzalez is, he's ready to roll the dice. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna reopen to new replies. And you got this group just by uh, taking over. By clicking the button, take it over. And you have to pay a fee for it? Well, it takes one of my slots, but I'm about to step down here. There's only three, right? There's three slots, yeah. Three slots per $72. Yeah. You can get as many as you want, right? Yeah. So if you open 18 accounts, you get 18 times three slots. So, for example, you know, you might, um, if you have more than three or four groups, then you just keep opening slots. So anyway. You can sell this, then. You could potentially sell it, yeah. Um, now, before is that against toss? I don't know, but I wouldn't I mean, tell. No, him. no, I know. Like <laughs> someone would. It, no, no, I'm just asking out of curiosity. Like you, by, by way That's of putting it on the market, general. like as an actual. Like, as now to that sell. might be interesting to put meetup groups on Flippa. <laughs> Take them over and put them on Flippa. Shoot, it might be a whole new business opportunity. Well, how would you turn it over to somebody else? Is there a? Oh, I'm going to show you how to turn it over to somebody here. I'm going um, to get this video. I've got my. So uh, so anyway, um, I'm gonna actually we're pretty close to done here uh, with what I was going to talk about. So there's a a couple of other uh, ways that you can run this uh, juice. Is when you do the discussion boards like this, there it's fairly easy to see. If you you can also create a page, and you can just randomly uh, create pages and do the same thing. And so for example, you could come up with a like a uh, marketing resource guide, an SEO resource guide, and just put them on these groups 
and then turn the groups back loose into the wild. Now, here's the way this works. I'm going to get rid of this group now, right now, because it's taken up one of my slots. And I, you know, oh, okay. Well, here we'll do this one last thing. Here, we'll. It's not slot worthy for me. So I'm going to say, um, uh, let's see. I'm going to say uh, email members. And I'm going to say this is from David Favor. And I say, um, um, let's see. I, I usually have templates to do this, and I haven't done it for a while. Let's see if, uh, if you. So I'm going to let this group go in a minute, and I just said if you'd like assistance to running this group, be in touch with me. And I'm going to say um, HTTP colon All right, so let's wrap up on this right quick. So I just uh, I just uh, uh, made this uh, email and said um, I gave them my primary meetup group, and I said I took this group over to send uh, email the members. Hopefully, so if someone in the group will step up as organizer. If you're inspired, take uh, take the group over and be in touch with me for assistance about how to grow your group. So, and I'm going to post this on the message board, and I'm going to hit submit. So that just went to 272 people. All right. And now let's see. I think we've gone through all the SEO. Oh, the the uh, the last SEO thing too is uh, see this uh, sponsors and perks over here. Mm -hmm. You can do the same thing over here. Uh, you can go into sponsors, and you can uh, create a either a group sponsor or a membership perk, and add your uh, SEO stuff over there too to pass link juice. So I think that gets all the link juice stuff. So now I'm done with this group. So I'm going to go to my account. And oh, they changed the darn thing again. Uh, used to th have a thing over here that had uh, subscriptions. Well, no, that's just that's a, that's where I went. It used to organizer. What? How the heck do I? My profile. Oh, maybe this. Oh, here we are. So here's how the categories get set up. So meet up, you guys are stupid as a bag of hammers. It's stupid to put multiple things, multiple places. I bet if we hit view profile here, uh, nope, I was wrong. I thought it would give me my category. Oh no, that's the profile of this one group instead of all my thing. Okay, so here's the step down as organizer thing again. So I'm gonna say step down as organizer. Now, in the step-down process, um, if I nominate one of these people, like I could pick one of these people, like uh, Mike. I don't want to, though. So I'm going to say, no, I don't want to nominate. If, if you nominate somebody to take over the group, it's better to be in touch with them yeah. because it takes up one of your slots. Let's see. I don't know if you're in here or not. Uh, let's see. Steve Sigwald. Nope, you're. I'm not one of the 272 special. Well, join right away. <laughs> join right now on your phone. 
<laughs> yeah, so so basically when I when I uh, step down, it's going to send another message to all the members of the group saying somebody else can take over. Uh, let's see. Uh, but you said it still takes one of your spots? You really, you really, you really give it away? Well, it, if you nominate somebody, it keeps taking up one of your slots until the 14 days oh. goes away or they take it over. And I don't want to do that. I ain't willing to wait. It ain't worth it ain't slot worthy, as Kristen said. I like that slot worthy. So, and for the other here, I'm going to say uh, just uh, took over to offer assistance to um, someone else. And who knows if anybody reads this or not? All right. So I'm going to hit submit. So boom. So I'm no longer the organizer. You mm -hmm. step down as the organizer. Of the, uh, blah, blah, blah. So you can see, I mean, there's all sorts of different ways to to um, use the different groups that are orphaned. So I think, I've got a slot right now. I think Steve's taking over right now. Okay, he's typing it in. Yeah. So for example, <laughs> yeah. So so yeah. So Steve is he's he, taker. I like that. He's on he's on the uptake. So now if we go back to this uh, group here, it probably says that um, yeah. See, there's no organizer over here. This group doesn't have an organizer. Learn more. Now, what would also be interesting is there's no way to get a list of these. Um, having a, some kind of bot that would walk groups to try to figure that out in a way that Meetup wouldn't know you were doing that is something I've been thinking about for quite a while. But I haven't come up with a good. Uh, I haven't come up with a good um, a way of doing that. Now, it might be. that uh, just using that link right there, I don't know, just randomly putting in group names there. Like, what's your, is it Internet Marketing Party one word is yours? So, Internet Marketing Party. Let's see what happens when we hack the link. Yeah, so this would be a way to, um, to just go through the top like 100 groups every morning and do this random link here that I just put in with uh, changing this this uh, the name of the group right here and if and then scrape the page and if the if you find this text this group doesn't have an organizer then you could automatically click and say take over so that would be a that would be a useful bot to have too now, this is not any good for it if you try to do something virtual though Oh yeah, it's great to do virtual stuff. It's just you've got to list physical venues if you expect Meetup to allow you to actually have the group form. Once the group forms, it's, yeah. So when so so that's a good point. So when you start a new Meetup group, yeah. always list at least two or three events at physical venues. You can always change the venue later, yeah. or you can cancel the group. Yeah. Don't make any difference. It's just as long as you get through the first stage of the gauntlet. Because as far as I can tell, once you make it through the gauntlet, they never check it again. Really? So it could all be virtual then? Yep. But you've got to have, for the for the group to make, you've got to have it uh, physical at a physical venue to start with. Okay. Otherwise, because when you go through the process, they ask you, do you commit to having physical meetups? David Buster, so you just put that. Yeah, just, you just pick some random place that yeah. other meetup groups meet, and who cares if you show up? Go to meetups, okay. Yeah, just list beats, list Dave and Buster's, you know, list Michael Abedin's house uh, at eight in the morning. Six lounge. Yeah, so <laughs> okay, that's the that's what you do. Cool. Any uh, questions to wrap up on this? So you did this primarily just to expose these two hundred seventy-two people to your to link them to your site. Yeah, except I expose different than you do. It's not like the trench coat that. No, I apologize. <laughs> It's a trench coat, Jay. <laughs> he hadn't been arrested for weeks. <laughs> where, and y'all tell you what, where the trench coat in Austin in the summers. You know, it's tough. Stand out. So yes, the the answer is I I took that group over simply to access the membership. Okay. And if I if I was going through it a little bit better, I've got all templates that I've written up, emailed, and I would probably go back and find one that fit that this particular group better than just making one up randomly. But you get the idea. So your end game is to get these people. Meetup group, yeah. So free SEO because well, free members too. Because 272 members, I don't know if I get 10 members, it's 10 that I didn't have for free. So 
for you know five minutes worth of work. So even if the only thing you did was take over the group and send an email, yeah, boom, it was worth it. It was worth it. So at some point, if everybody in this room went home and did the same thing with this email group, I mean, wouldn't it like kind of start to look a little weird? Odd? Yeah, but what are they going to do? I mean, what's so it look it, it, when you say looks odd, you're imagining that somebody in meetup is it's somehow going to know. Paying attention, yeah, they're not paying attention. Because it, I don't know how many meetup groups there are in Austin, but there, you know, let, let's see if it says here on the front page. There's um, there's uh, in a 25 mile, let's do a hundred mile radius. There's 1,160 meetup groups. So imagine trying to keep up with what's happening on 1,160 meetup groups. Across the whole U.S. Yeah, I mean, good yeah, good grief. Here's an interesting hack. Look at this. Now, hey guys, I have to take off. I have a hey, meeting Pete, in 15 minutes. I've got to be at. I don't have cards, but... Um, Anyway, that, that pretty much wraps up. Any other burning questions about... Okay, Kristen, what's the question? Since we're in here, can you um, just kind of take us through the initial, how to set up yourself as an account? Oh, well, you, uh, to set up as an account, you just... Um, uh, let's see... Uh, organizer dues, uh, you just go in here and uh, since, since I'm already set up, it has my information set up. Um, and if I if it wasn't set up, then this would be you know start an account or something like that. Then you just start an account. Why did it say twelve dollars for us? Why did it say seventy-two? Twelve dollars a month. Later. Twelve times six, seventy-two. Because it's, oh, okay. but he said, don't do anything until we have yeah, the email we want to do. Yeah, I'm going to give you a call. See you guys. Yeah, so I mean, go in and set up your organizer account first and then... Don't set up the group yet until we... Yeah, or, or the, the primary thing about the group is just to make sure that... Here's the thing about setting up groups. Here's the most important thing is to set all your categories right up front before you do anything else with your group. So when that email goes out, it be you. Like if you only set up one category, it only goes out to one category. If you set up all 15, then it goes out to 15. And 15 is the max? I believe that's the max, yeah. So for example, um, uh, let's see. Yeah, I was going to do wellness. I think there's about a thousand people on the wellness list right now. Uh, hmm. All right, so let's go to, let's take a look at wellness. Hey, Glenn. Hey, David. So in wellness, there's 913 people. Hello, Hello A. Local or up uh, Within 100 miles or 25. So law of attraction. I bet there's a whole bunch of foolish people. I mean, uh, really smart people. <laughs> uh, let's see. That's how I got here. We talked about. Oh, <laughs> let's see if I can figure out how to get to law of attraction here. Let's see if that'll work. Uh, business and law of attraction. Law of attraction again. <laughs> Well, let's see how many people are on this waiting list. One person. So, so this, so this is important too, because you know you have to look at these categories. Because if you pick a category that's got one person waiting, then you just wasted yeah. your your email. So uh, consciousness. This is probably the no. That didn't it. So let's see what law law of attraction is. Consciousness law of attraction. What the bleep? That I don't know. That was a good movie. That's not it. So you'd have to figure out what the right one is for law of attraction because it ain't just jumping out at me here which one it is. Brother Abraham Hicks, law of attraction. Well, where'd it go? Abraham Hicks. Stupid meetup. Uh, do you see it? Where is it? Is it? It was back in your oh. original list. Uh, 
Abraham Hicks. Two people, yeah. So, so somehow or another, that we aren't quite figuring out the right uh, waiting list. Oh, here we are. Law of attraction is one word. Oh, okay. So we'll see if this is now. I got to tell you though, for me personally, I've taken over some law of attraction groups, and my experience is most of the people that are doing the whole secret thing are uh, losers. I apologize. They suffer from this malady called secretitis, where they think they can ponder the the lint in their belly button and stuff will happen, <laughs> which is stupid. Um, I'm 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 trying to hold back here. Um, you can't turn your recliner into a Maserati. You can't turn your recliner to your Maserati, as far as I can tell. I've tried. Uh, as far as I can tell, you've got to take action aligned with whatever your desired outcome is. You got to really desire. You have a strong desire. In order for the conversion to work. Very low conversion rate. So here we. Too bad all those Somalians were like so negative. Yeah, there you go. Do they have like attracted all that starvation or? into their life? <laughs> well, yeah. So I mean, you you'll have to do you Scarcity just mindset. do this yourself and huh? test it. Scarcity mindset. So what you do is you just go into use this sort of general template here of how to search for things, which is um, you know sitemeetup.com and then whatever the keyword is in quotes, and then in title waiting list Austin, and if you'd like to see waiting list. New York, you just, you know, change that. And then you could probably, you know, if you figure out a uh, law of attraction like this. So there's no way to like rank categories of meeting? No. You're talking about, you know, how do you find the biggest waiting list in, in Austin? Yeah. You just have to have done enough of it to know or have a feel of how to start based on your niche. There's no way to really do that all that easily. Maybe you can start a class about me. Um, I'll probably offer some sort of, um, I mean, this is kind of a gen generic sort of how to use orphan groups, and I'm guessing people that are interested in running meetup groups, will they can be in touch if they'd like to consult about it. Any other questions about this? Rock and roll, ooh, we made it in an hour. Anything? Going once? Yeah. Um, oh, Calvin's here. Okay, yeah. So, hey now, brother. Thank you. So for fitness, so much. useful? We'll see. Yeah. Okay. Take I'm care. Gonna, I'm going to target everybody who's interested in type of fitness, exercise. Oh, yeah. So uh, let's do fitness here is probably, I, I'm guessing that's a word. Oh, look at that. Hmm. That's still, in Brooklyn. And they're still waiting. And they're still <laughs> waiting. I apologize. Fitness. Um in Texas. Oh, one other really important thing is when you form a meetup group, yeah, 2,700 fitness people. So that would be... Um, At least by two or three, that might be interesting. Yeah. So here's another important thing is if you go into your account in the general settings here, mm -hmm. uh, and like where it says location, yeah. when you form a meetup group, Whatever this zip code is here, mm -hmm. that's what made it. That's what waiting list you're going to access. So, for example, if you're trying to, like, you're Sean Collins, you're trying to start a meetup group in New York. New York yeah. You have to set this to Manhattan's. You know, one zero 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 two. I think is the central zip code. Okay. So you have to set it, and then you can't change that until after that initial meetup announcement goes out. So you have to figure out what the uh, how to go camp on the uh, interests mm -hmm. in um, New York. So you have to start a bogus meetup account, member account, okay. and set your zip code to 10001 and set your category to camp on as like marketing or SEO or affiliate so that you get the email that a new group and your interests have formed. Once you get that email, then you can go and you can change that to the next one. But it's got to be that this zip code has got to be set, yeah. and that determines who for, gets it. For the, for the time frame? It's got to be set until that uh, until the group forms. Okay. Because if you try to form a group, then it's going to form around the zip code of whatever's there. Yeah. 
So what I what I would do is if I was going to do a New York, New York one, I would change this to Manhattan and hit save. Mm-hmm. Then I'd go form the group and create the other gr- uh, meetup member to camp on it mm-hmm. and make sure that I saw the interest. What do you mean by the meetup member? You create a bogus member that all it does is camp. Like I've got a bogus member set up for New York and Los Angeles and Dallas so that I can track all the new meetup groups that form there. Because there's no way to find out new meetup groups that form unless you've got your zip code set in that area. And I also expand the radius um, to 100 miles, yeah. And I've got to, I've got to figure out where that... Um, let's see, let's do this. I, let's see if we can figure out how to get to those uh, interests because that's absolutely essential. Do what? Vogue. Vogue <laughs> I was like searching, I couldn't find it on the, on, on the phone here. I finally found it. It's like, I'm a new organizer. I didn't play new record, I play around. So yeah, let's say. I don't know if. He's I don't know. It's not worthy for David. <laughs> let's see. Um, he just sent him an email saying, you know, I guess if you want it, it's okay. You can take my leftovers. Yeah, oh, I guess that wouldn't be surfaced out into the, the Google area. Let's see. Um, how do I manage interest in new media group alerts? Okay, let's do this. Uh, log in your meetup account. You'll land on a personal member homepage. If you're already logged in, uh, scroll down a bit to. Do what? Log in your meetup account. You'll land on your personal member homepage. If you're already logged in, you can get the member homepage. Like clicking the meetup logo at the top left. Oh, okay. So meetup is yet even more stupid than I thought. There's three places. So, oh, here we go. Oh, here we go. All right. So I could meetup.com. Please pay attention. You are, you guys are idiots. Um, so you click on this meetup icon and you scroll all the way to the bottom. It's no longer under your account. And you can see what all the interests are that I've got set up. It's below the fold. Yeah, it's below the fold and it's stupid. So I've got all sorts of things set up here, uh, like work at home, uh, dating for dating products, writers, new in town. And I've got a bunch of tech stuff like Linux and HTML and jQuery, CSS. You have 170 interests? So there are 170 interests here for this one, for this account. Oh, okay. And I suspect that, let's see, how do I add interest? Add more interests. So if I'd like to add more interests, like here's uh, spiritualism, uh, I think I'll pass on that. But entrepreneurship, uh, business and social networking is probably what that is. Spiritual growth and transformation okay health and wellness startup business startup ventures venture capital it's so unlimited yeah you can just set up you know thousands of these things maybe you're testing fun times <laughs> fun time mm, i don't know about that 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 might be some oh wait i got to say the best meetup group ever Cougars and Cubbies. I kid you not. Welcome Cougars and Cubbies where younger men can meet older women. and Older women can meet younger men. I kid you not. There's really a Cougars and Cubbies meetup group. Oh. So anyway, if, if you think... If you think that there ain't a meetup group for whatever you think there is, you'd like to attend, you're wrong. It's it's, it's there, there yeah, baby. Oh, it's there. It's there. It's there. And also, I noticed that uh, if you look at the bottom here, it says, didn't find the meetup group you like. Let's do this. Um, they don't have professional. You know what? I looked for optometrists the other day. A client of mine is an optometrist. And they don't have meetup groups for those people, man. Well, I would do yeah. wellness. Wellness is dead. Okay. Optometrists would be too, that would be, to me, that would be a pretty I tough sell. I can't see that one. I was going to say, yeah, they, they have one, you just can't uh, see it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I guess we have to I click on, I guess we, I guess we have to click on one of these. So if I click on, um, I did a search for marketing, and if I click on, um, well, we'll do David's group, Internet Marketing Party. And then um, if I go that's down that's to... That's Oh, is that Sean's group? Oh, yeah, he changed his. The Dr. Evil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Hmm. Well, it used to have a place to add different uh, groups to. I guess I'm already camped on all, most of these topics or something. You can. Now, here's another thing that I would rec recommend that you turn off. Is I could go in here and say suggest a meetup group um, by Chocolate Bliss. Now and put a link in there to my website. Um, you get the idea. I mean, you random people can spam the, these groups. So when you set up a meetup group, here's what I'd recommend you do. Um, is if if I go into my meetup group for Inside Track Party here. Uh, if you go into the group settings, this is probably pretty important. Uh, let's see, optional features. Uh, right now I've got the message boards turned on, so anytime I post a message it pops up a little thing at the bottom um, that asks me what message board I'd like to post it to because I sent out an email for this meetup. I'm going to turn this off right now to say keep message board on, but disable news posts and replies. So what that means is I'm the only person that can post. Uh, so nobody can, um, you know, randomly create a new message board thing. I've also got the mailing list set to allow all members to send messages, but organizers must approve messages first. Otherwise, you got people that will just join your group and spam your group. The other one that is, um, hmm. Okay, I'm going to submit this to turn off the message board thing. What's your Google Analytics number? Oh, Google Analytics is basically the uh, the traffic, how to look at traffic on your site. Uh, I can show you that here in a minute. Uh, where is the... Did they take out the suggest meetups? Where? Let, oh, okay. Let, let members suggest new meetups. So um, I've got it set to um, an organizer announces them. You can also set it to an organizer announces and three members say they're attending. A member or a member suggests them. I suggest that you don't set this oh, no. one. That's a good deal. God. Because then you got all sorts of people spamming you. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's go into um, uh, analytics. Google.com. Is that the link? Do, 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 do. Um, Are you speaking first Friday? Dave? Are you speaking first Friday? No. I just uh, put it up there. Did you ever figure out who it is? Uh, no. So here's the here's the uh, uh, the Google Analytics for uh, my meetup group. So it basically just gives you a view into the analytics of the site just like any other analytics. So it's just a it's just a hook to set and I'd recommend you set up analytics even if you don't understand exactly what it is, just go ahead and set it up to begin with. Well, like what would we set it up for? You'd set it up to begin with and then figure it out. Because if you wait, you know, three years from now to figure out, oh I need the analytics set, then you have three years less data. So don't worry about what it is, just set it. Well, you but you set up the analytics for your meetup group. Oh. So that's uh they they meetup added that uh here recently is to set up um Oh, so you can do analytics. Okay. I, yeah. I thought you were looking for some other site, so you can do analytics on your meetup. And when I did a promotional cycle on my um uh for my meetup group here recently and I had something like 500 visitors over a, a, a week period, and 60% or 70% of those were direct links, which means that they actually oh, typed in. So what I'd do is I'd say, if you'd like to find out more information, uh, Google Inside Track Party with Spaces. I didn't put the link, so people have to Google it, and then they have to click on it and join it. So that sent traffic directly from Google from a search instead of me. Yeah, 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 okay. But it doesn't tell you where they came from before they came to your site? Well, they had to come from, if there's no analytical information, if it's straight from Google, then that tells me that they came through an email. Because I doubt anybody's just going to randomly go into Google, wake up one morning and say, hmm, I think I'm on a Google Inside Track party. Yeah. Maybe, but you know, more than likely it's from Clint, an email. Clint, Clint probably would. That's what I do, yeah. yeah that's morning what Clint... ritual, man. Did you find <laughs> out about that? All right, one, one last random thing here, and we'll wrap up on. I've got um, a bot just to test the speed of your site. Oh, good. 
A uh, random thing about uh, when you're setting up uh, meetup group names and also uh, domain names and um, uh, figuring out what the keywords you're going to target are is there's two general ways you can do that. You can either uh, try to go after uh, pools of traffic that already exist or you can go after pools of traffic that are they exist and there's some sort of nomenclature within the subculture that nobody's accessed yet. So for example, there's this term, wetware hacking. Oh, now that's interesting because, oh, interesting. So the, um, uh, the, um, the new Google, I have to make a note to, I got to go read about this. Um, so the Penguin update fired, was it yesterday or day before in Google? Yeah. The last time I checked these links, there were uh, over 400,000, and now today there's 43. So what's the Penguin thing? The pe Penguin is an update. Uh, Panda was the last big update to Google, which was uh, last, uh, or yeah. February of 10. Yeah. And then uh, the other minor update was when the the uh, they changed all the subdomains to be the same domain and then penguin was the one that happened this week or in the last few days and it took this number from four hundred and nine thousand was the last time I checked it to forty three five now let's see where I rank okay now take a look at this so I'm number four with the term wetware hacking which is a term that people in this subculture have been using since the probably the late seventies and you have to be in the subculture to know the term and if you're, it's like, you know, it's like having the secret decoder ring. Mm -hmm. Like if you're in the subculture, you know, and if you ain't, you don't know. It's like people dropping acid. You can't explain to somebody what an acid trip's it's like. Special. No, you, you got to, you know, join the club. It, yeah. yeah. So here I'm number four. And actually when I registered this domain within three days, I was on page one. I was, all, I was the last link on page one and I keep getting more and more. If I click on this site, there's the entire content for that site. Mm. That's it. Mm. Wow. That's no, that's the number four link mm. in Google. Now the reason that's the number four link is, so and this is first the uh, the phrase uh, "content is king." <laughs> <laughs> well, the 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 thing about SEO, it, it it basically proves that SEO doesn't really work like everybody says it works because there are there's zero backlinks to this site. Right. This is all on-page SEO. In other words, there's no external links at all. There's not even a video. There's no videos. There's nothing. In fact, and there's no there there's no tr there's no trickery here either. Here's the actual HTML for this whole page. That's it. That is the entire. That's it. That's the entire HTML for the page. There's the title, which is wetware hacking, and there's a style sheet, and there's the H1 tag, which is wetware hacking, and there's a link to my uh, meetup group and an application if you'd like to uh, attend private hackathons. So a hackathon is where a group of people get together and talk about hacks. It might be a PHP hackathon or a wetware hackathon. And so the point of this is that um, if you've got a particular subculture that you pr participate in, try to figure out if there's a way that you can come up with a term that your subculture understands and knows about that nobody else is capitalizing on very well. Uh, frequent flexing. Frequent flexing, there you go. So that would be uh, that would be a domain that I'll go register here in a few minutes. Right, I already did. Oh, see, Calvin's smart. What's up? What? Yeah. So you're talking about the jargon within certain yeah. industries and markets. Yeah, so basically what this, this whole site is based on uh, uh, the fundamental things that Google tell you have to do to rank well in Google. That is 100% syntax uh, correct HTML and CSS, no errors, no warnings, no pass and go collecting $200. And the title is exactly what the term is, and the H1 tag is exactly what the term is. No extra words, no, nothing, you know. Uh, if wetware hacking had been taken, I might have said wetware hacking 101 or wetware hacking guide. It would have started with wetware hacking, though, both in the title and the first H1 tag. So, well, let, let me finish. 
So another thing is this page is semantically correct. In other words, there is only one H1 tag. If there's two H1 tags, that might completely drop out of the ranking. If there was an H1 tag, an H3 uh, tag, or an H6 tag and an H3 tag in that order, that would drop out of the rankings also because that's semantically incorrect. It should go H1, 2, 3, H2, H3, H2, 3, 4. In other words, semantically correct is, got a, is absolute in Google. And the other, the last thing is this page serves blazingly fast. If we check this site, it probably runs at eight to 10,000 requests a second. Pardon? There's no, yeah, it runs fast. There's no video, no optimization. No, no, no. There's, you, you're, any site, uh -huh. it doesn't matter if it's got video on it, yeah. it should serve, still serve at, uh, at least 1,000 requests a second if you'd like uh, high Google traction. All my sites serve four to 5,000 requests a second, or I never release them in the wild. Mm -hmm. And most people, if they can get, you know, 10 or 12 requests a second, they yeah. think it's a freaking good day. Yeah. And if you're hosting with somebody like HostGator or Bluehost or Dixie, if you can get one and a half or two requests a second, it's a freaking good, I mean, it's a really good day. Anyway, you had a question, Michael? So if I follow what you're saying, it's not so much what you've done on this site that got the high rankings, it's what you didn't do? It's that I played by the rules. I haven't gotten to writing content yet. Yeah. So here, here's, the, here's the point here, is that if you're focused on linking, writing content, Whatever you think you're focused on, and none of it's worth anything unless you fix the base level stuff Google says for you to do right, which is correct semantics, fast page loading, correct HTML, correct uh, CSS, which you can test through the, the uh, if you do a search for uh, Unicorn uh, and W3, like the, uni the validator, uh, Unicorn W3, so here's the unicorn validator. You can put uh, pages in there. I'm, I guess, I'm guessing this. Um, let's just check my site here. It'd be funny if there was a syntax error here, wouldn't it? That would just completely blow everything I just told you. Oh, look at that. Oh, okay. so this this is an acceptable syntax error, and actually I can fix that. It says that um, it's basically saying that. Uh, this entity form key has no system identifier. Oh, there's a there is one little broken thing in there that I could fix and probably get even higher ranking. So these are pretty non uh, uh, con that really aren't considerations in true syntax. But I, I'll I'll fix these here in a few minutes. But if you look at a lot of sites, they'll have like, uh, I checked somebody's site that he couldn't get any ranking in Google and it had something like 800 errors, syntax errors. Check internet marketing party? Uh, well, we, yeah, we can check uh, David's group here. So you said there's only one H1, but what if you wanted to have bullet points all at the same time? Could you do multiple H2s? Mm -hmm. That's the way you do them. In fact, it's way better to do bullets with uh, H2s than with a, a normal list. Yeah. So, like David's got 58 errors. Um, I'd probably fix that. That, that slows down the page? Or what it well, it's going to do multiple things. It's going to slow down the page. See, the other thing is also when you hit the browser, a person's browser, mm -hmm. that's a strong consideration for how you write your web pages, too. And so if you've got um, a bunch of errors, like this has got a bunch of errors and the browser's got to try to make some sense of that. Gotcha. And it even gets... It's work harder for, for Google then. Yeah, and here's the, here's the ultimate um, tester for uh, web pages here is... Uh, Uh, webpagetest.org also uh, why slow and page speed or plugins into Firefox that you can use uh, webpagetest.org is uh, nice because it's a separate website so it doesn't matter if you're using Firefox or or Safari or whatever Gmetrics is a good speed tester uh, Gmetrics is another one yeah uh, so this one is uh, pretty good I mean I could even get that down even farther if we look at the waterfall here 
is it says that, um, like see all these, uh, uh, these long requests here, the, prim the majority of the time in this request is being taken up by uh, accessing the Google font off the Google CDN for writing that wetware hacking up at the top. Mm -hmm. So what I could do is I could take, um, I could just uh, uh, change the, instead of doing the Google font in line in the code, I could have a JavaScript uh, function run after the page is loaded that would go in and set the, the uh, font to the Google font. So it would say wetware hacking and it would be bang, instant, and probably it looks like it would paint in around, um, uh, 99 milliseconds, mm -hmm. or no, it'd be 323. So around, uh, around, uh, uh, around between uh, 0.4 and 0.5 milliseconds. And that's what you want to or uh, to 0.4 and 0.5 seconds. So in half a second, the page would be up. Yeah. Right now, it's running about a second. So I could change if I just change this slightly. Yeah. Um, I can uh, I could get sub second. Change. Yeah, it tells you what to change. It tells you that right here, it says that it, wetware hacking. So my in, my HTML took 323 milliseconds. Yeah. And it took another, uh, you know, about 100 milliseconds to load the CSS. Mm -hmm. And then everything else is, on, is, you know, biting me from Google. So, yep. Then you good to go there. Okay. Yeah, so I'll go, I, I'll, I'll actually go back and change that just as a, a just as a, um, um, an exercise in uh, optimizing it. What? Feel like going and crawling into a tar pit and just turning into oil for future generations. <laughs> well, why is that? Because I just the idea that anybody could understand this just on, is about to make every neuron in my brain just explode. Well, I mean, the the <laughs> thing you do is if you have a if you have a site that's generating money, then what you do is you do a joint venture with somebody on a revenue share basis. Because I mean, anybody good, that's the only way they're going to work. And you figure out how much how much money you're willing to give them of what new business they bring in, because you figure you've built like you've got Austin All Natural, you've built up a certain equity, and so you figure well, you know, if I'm making um, you know a hundred thousand dollars a month profit, mm -hmm. and if I can awesome. you know double my double my throughput and also make the indexing of my content better, so people keep coming back. Maybe I'm imagining I, you know, add another hundred thousand a month after month six to where it's a multi-million dollar property in a few years, and then you figure out how much of that, you know, multi-million dollars you're willing to split with a person, and you pitch them. You pitch them on a, you know, a twenty-five percent or fifty percent or, you know, like Perry and, and Ryan, the way they run their incubator is they do an eighty percent split. If you took Austin All Natural and you uh, joint ventured with them, they'd take eighty percent and you get twenty percent. But if they, you know, boost your income a thousand percent, who cares? And your 80% will get a whole lot more. Well, your 20%. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So that's the, that's the point is once you've got, once you've got uh, a property that is functioning well mm -hmm. or that you've got a following, some kind of tribe around, then if you can fix the plumbing to where you can reach more people and also... Uh, create a path for those people to come back and interact on your site effectively, then, you know, your income just freaking goes out the, the roof. Yeah, I mean, even like in Austin All Natural, even if you, even if you just put random things like um, you just fixed the site and the only monetization you did was like a book of the week on Amazon. And that's the only thing you did on the whole site is you put a book in the week uh, link to Amazon on that site on every freaking page. Then I bet you'd just have a huge chunk of income, right? So that means every page you make, every page is uh, every article becomes a separate page, and then on that page you sell. You know, the ad block for that page is an Amazon book, and then you also sell ad blocks, right? So if you know, like, if I look at uh, this is the um, uh, May 2012 issue. If I open up. Um, uh, to page seven, I see a crystal bed therapy amethyst biomat. Is this the girl in uh, Bastrop? It's one of them. It's not the one that we see. Already. Okay. Oh no, this is somebody different. Susan Hinkle. So, uh, so Susan Hickle. Heichel, yeah. she's Heichel. In, she's in Castles downline or up. 
Okay. So if Susan Heichel would like to add, to have a uh, ad block on that page, then you sell her, you know, a certain number of impressions. Like maybe she gets, uh, you know, a thousand impressions for a hundred bucks or ten bucks or whatever. And then, you know, every time it gets an impression, that counts as, you know, one more impression. So in other words, she'd pay you a hundred bucks for a thousand impressions or something. And that would be a different payment for just random impressions on your site, or if, for example, there was an article written about uh, amethyst biomats, because that amethyst biomats article is over time going to get tremendous traffic about that particular topic. So you charge more for that uh, ad space than if it's just a random ad that's floating around your site. So you'd have different ad rates for different placement in general. So you'd have a general placement ad rate and a specific placement. So if you like to buy an ad and I get, you know, I'm me, at Michael Abedin, I get to choose where the ad goes, it's a lower rate. Or if you choose where your ad goes all the time, that's a higher rate. So this part is for user, for, uh, for the user experience, you want it to be a fast load. Yeah, yeah well, not for, well, for user experience, yes, but for Google says, yeah. and every, every year it becomes more and more important the speed at which page, pages load. Any other questions before we wrap up here? Slow pages get bumped. Going once? Oh yeah, so you recommend WordPress then? Oh yeah, WordPress. Um, oh, so here's an, okay. Last random thing here, which is a really great tool. Here's how you choose what technology to use. Let's look. WordPress, uh, Post Nuke, which probably doesn't even register anymore. Post Nuke was one of the first CMSs that was ever developed. Uh, Drupal, Joomla, Expression Engine. So these are the primary, or some of the primary CMS systems: WordPress, Post Nuke, Drupal, Joomla, and Expression Engine. Let's see which one you should use for your website. This is going to tell you. Oh, look at that. Um. Post nuke. Oh yeah, you showed it. Post nuke is freaking yeah. is freaking gone. It's extinct. It's down in a negative. Drupal started about the same time as uh, uh, the data here started about the same time as WordPress. It's barely creeped up because Drupal is kind of, using Drupal is kind of like um, uh, putting your hand on a concrete sidewalk and banging it over and over with a ball peen hammer. Why would you do it? Joomla. Drupal. Uh, Drupal. Joomla. Joomla is like uh, uh, just banging one finger with a ball peen hammer because so that it only hurts one finger and, and maybe two or three fingers depending on um, you know the day. So in fact, you can look at Joomla. It's interesting. You see that uh, Joomla started about uh, the data here starts about a year after the data on WordPress. Now, if you watch this curve here, this is where Joomla was promoting that eventually they were going to have the one button press update like yeah. WordPress does. And right here in mid late 209, they finally said, "No, we're just we ain't bright enough to do that." Psych. And then, so, yeah, you've been punked. And then, <laughs> and then you see where they're going, and you see where WordPress is going. So here's the thing about Drupal and Joomla. Besides, they're they're great if you're somebody that has a web services uh, business that's pitching you to pay them to do it, because once you do. Once you do, there's no escape. Yeah, it's yeah. like, um, you know, um, uh, taking the needle in the arm. Yeah. You know, you can't get off. <laughs> so, uh, you know, Joomla and, and Drupal are kind of like heroin. Is once you start, mm -hmm. it's really tough to get off. Mm -hmm. And um, also, there's no way to upgrade. Every version that comes out, you throw away everything you did before, which is great no. for web services companies, because then they got to, you know, you got to pay again. With WordPress, you hit update, update, update. In fact, recently I set up a WordPress 2.7 site and went through the update all the way to 3.3.2, mm -hmm. and it worked flawlessly every time. Sure. Update, update, update. Everything worked. The thing with WordPress is it just works. Do what? All the plugins. Well, the plugins, you, you do those. You update those separately. Separately, yeah. So this So anytime you'd like to test a trend, you can, uh, you can uh, look at the trends. And that'll tell you. Oh, here's a here's an interesting trend too. Let's look at this. Uh, While you're on that graph. Hmm. While you're on that graph. Yeah. What 
precisely is that showing? I mean, what is Word, WordPress is getting higher in? Search volume. I apologize. So this is basically tells you how much activity, in other words, how many people are using and contributing to this particular Popularity. topic. In particular, one of the trends that this tracks really well is uh, all the mailing lists where developers uh, are talking about what they're doing and swapping email back and forth about what's happening on a project. That counts towards this too. What was that, what, that site, that do-it-yourself site a while back that you talked about when we were over at the, that place over in North Austin? It was site something or other. Uh, I forget what the name of it was. So it was because I somebody the other day said, oh yeah, I've got my site built on this. I was like, I can't even remember. So here's the, here's the, um, the operating system you ought to use for your servers too. Notice what's happening to Windows Server. It's a Windows Server and um, uh, Debian and Red Hat and everybody started over here and they're all plummeting and Ubuntu started here in 2004 and up 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 now Ubuntu the operating system actually draws from the uh, Debian uh, which is the blue line here the Debian uh, packages they've just got better marketing than um, Debian so it's just actually a repackaging of Debian so uh, I'm about to switch to Debian because they release code. They, so Debian releases code and then Ubuntu takes it, repackages it. So if I go directly to the Debian um, uh, repositories, then I get code faster. You realize Debian is an anagram for academia? There you go. Do you know Ubuntu, my favorite restaurant in Napa? Oh, there you go. Mm -hmm. So anyway, this is another way. I mean, you can use these trends to tell different things that you can, um, uh, different technologies that you can use with whatever. I'm not familiar with, with the technologies. What are they for? These are operating systems. Mm -hmm. uh, like Red Hat, uh, you know, started at the top here, and it's flatlined. Yeah. It's one of the hardest operating systems to use. Is that with the, the computer, or that's on the web? Both. I mean, you can run red. I could run Red Hat desktop on this machine here if I'd like. Okay. It's just really, really difficult for most users to use. Does it do hardware too, or no? What does that mean, hardware? Trends, like you know, could you tell the difference between you know smartphones and stuff? Oh yeah. So for example, if you'd like to do like a Android, iOS. Not that they would skew the numbers on their own. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see, like, you know, App Apple Chrome versus Firefox. Oh, Chrome is Apple does a good job marketing, but you can see that the all the activity is all about Android. And in fact, iPhone usage is just freaking dropping in the toilet. It's because it sucks. Apple is just, uh, they're just evil people. Uh, Android is an open source um, system. And more and more people are switching over to it. So Apple is sort of headed towards, you know, at one point in time, Apple owned almost 90% of all the desktop computing marketplace back in the Apple II days. And then Apple thought to themselves, ah, oh, we don't care about those pesky users. We will tell them what they need. And they created the, what was that stupid Mac they did, the little square? With the different colors? No. That famous Super Bowl? Well, it was the Lisa, and then what was the one after it? Yeah. There was the the Lisa, Lisa and then 1984. I remember. I, 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 don't, I don't care about the commercials, but it's the stupid thing. After he left Apple, he went to this and did his own thing. Well, yeah. basically, what Apple did is they closed their system. The Apple II was open. The Macintosh. No. Well, no, there was something before the Macintosh. Uh, yes, there was, was something. Like some educational. It yeah, like it was an educational. It was a stupid, ugly the block thing. <laughs> Yeah, so basically the Apple II was a desktop system that had card slots. You could hack hardware, you could hack software, you could hook a monitor up to it, uh, keyboard, extra devices, and then they closed all that, threw it all away, made everything proprietary, and said, we're going to strap you to a wall and lash you senseless and tell you what you need. And that was when the IBM PC, that's when IBM said, huh, well, how about we just do a better Apple II, we upgrade the hardware, the bus architecture, and just do exactly what they did and take the market. And they did. It's exactly what they did. 
and then Apple drops something to like seven or eight percent of the marketplace in just a few years, and the IBM PC is taken off. Yeah. And we still use the same IBM PC architecture, even though IBM ain't made a PC in <laughs> twenty some odd years now. Yeah. They used to make them over at the corner of Burnett and um, uh, Mopac, mm -hmm. but that. In fact, they dozed the facility about a year ago. The building is not even there anymore. Uh, so Apple's going back into that thing now, where they've got the App Store and the iPhones and the the like the MacBook Pros and everything that's closed, and they're telling everybody this is the way you're going to go, and it'll work for a while. And then people like Android, you can look at the numbers. I mean, the numbers tell the tale. In fact, the numbers are, you know, there's like. Um, about four and a half times more search volume for Android than iOS, which is the iPhone uh, operating system. So, so you know, rid of my Macintosh, you're talking about? Mm -hmm. no, uh, Android is the no, open so source. Oh, I I don't remember what the name is. Any, any other questions? We'll wrap up here. We kind of got off on some rabbit holes here. Any, mm -hmm. Anything else? Going once, so twice, three times. All right, we're gonna wrap it up.